Welcome. In the last two videos, we talked about data type modifiers. And one of the things that you may have noticed when we looked at the numeric range here on the table on the right, you may have seen that the negative value in the range side could represent one more than the positive side. Right? If you look at the short integer, also we have, all, it goes all the way to 768, and on the right side it goes to 767. This, of course, also applies to an int and also applies to a long, long int. However, I did not write the full number, so we couldn't really see it. So in this video, we're going to discuss why that's the case, and we're going to talk about a particular issue that affects negative integers. So let's get started. In the video of sign and unsign integers, I told you how we were able to represent a negative number. So for example, if we look at data type char, we said that a value such as negative 1 could be represented if we did what? If we use the leftmost bit as a sign bit. And if this bit was a 1, it represented a negative number. And if it was a 0, it represented a positive number. So a negative 1 using a char looks something like this. Where the leftmost bit, we used it to represent the negative sign. And of course, the rightmost bit was the 1 that represents the value 1. However, using this scheme, we have two problems. So let's take a look at these two problems. The first problem has to do with the value 0. What do I mean by that? So the value 0, how does the value 0 look in binary? Well, the value 0 is just 8 zeros, right? And this is in char. Of course, we could do the same thing with int, a short int and a long int, but I like to use char because it's easier for me to draw on this board since I don't have to write 32 bits every single time. So I'm using char to discuss this. However, this applies to an int as well. So a zero is eight zeros. Now, what happens if I change the sign bit when we have the value of zero? What happens if I have the following? When we look at this, we realize that what? The top value would be what? It would be a positive zero. And the bottom value would be a negative zero. However, there is really no such thing as a positive zero or a negative zero. Every number has two sides, right? So you have a positive one, a negative one. Positive a thousand, negative a thousand. Every number has this property. However, zero does not. You do not have a positive zero and a negative zero. Because we're using the leftmost bit as a sign bit, suddenly we have the concept of plus zero and negative zero. And this is problematic. The first problem occurs that these two values are not the same. If you were to ask the computer, hey, do I have the value zero? Then you would have to ask this question twice because in this case, positive zero and negative zero supposedly have to be equivalent. However, they're not. And the second problem that is even worse is that if we're trying to do math, what do we do? Well, if we have a negative one and I add one to it, I go to zero. And if I add one to it, I go to positive one. However, if I have this scheme where I have the ability to have a negative zero, I would do what? I, well, from negative one, I would add one and would go to negative zero. Then I would add one and I would go to zero. And then I would add one and I would go to one. This is incorrect. Therefore, we have to figure out a way for us to not represent the value zero twice. So that's the first problem that we have when we use this scheme. Okay, so far so good. Now we have a second problem. The second problem comes when we try to actually do mathematics. It's quite similar with the zero, but it's even worse. Let's take a look at a little quick example. Let's take the number two. So the number two in binary looks how? It looks like this. It's six zeros, and then we have a one, and then a zero, right? It's a positive number. And let's suppose that I would like to do the following. I want to do two minus one. Now, 2 minus 1 is the same thing as 2 plus negative 1, right? Let's say I want to do this operation. Okay, well, how does negative 1 look? Using what I told you in the sign and unsigned integers, a negative 1 would have a sign bit of a 1, then there will be 6 zeros, and then there will be a 1, okay? So if I want to do this addition over here on the right, I would have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, Plus, and let's just say I put a little plus right here, and then we would have a one, six zeros, make sure I write them all right, and a one. When we do this addition, what do we get? We get one, zero plus one is one, one plus zero is one, and then zero plus zero is zero, 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 zero plus one is one. What value is this? 
Well, the first bit, this one right here, that's the ones bit. And this one is the twos bit. So two plus one is three. Okay, so we have a value of three. And the sign bit, which is this thing on the left, says that this number is negative. So we get the answer minus three. Definitely two minus one, it's not negative three. Two minus one is one. So there's a problem. The fact that we're using the leftmost bit as a sign bit, it causes issues when we try to do mathematics because this mathematics considers that sign bit as an actual numeric value. So in order to solve these two problems, we have to represent negative integers in a different way. And this different way is called two's complement. So let's check out how two's complement looks. So let's take a look at the value negative one once again. So the value negative one, if I don't use the sign bit, right, I would, let, I would just write the little negative sign here. And I would have what? I would have seven zeros. And there you go, seven zeros and a one. In order to do the two's complement of this number, what we have to do is first we have to do the one's complement. Well, what is the one's complement? Well, the one's complement is actually very simple. So the one's complement, let me write here, this would be one's, and I'll write comp for complement. The one's complement says that we have to flip every single bit when the integer is negative. So if I flip every single bit in this numeric value, what will I get? I would have the following. I would have one, 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 zero. This is the value negative one in one's complement. Notice that the fact that it's a negative number, we have what? We still have a one in the sign bit, right? So that's still, that is still part of this numeric scheme. We're still using the leftmost bit as a sign bit. And when we see a one there, we know, okay, this is a negative number. However, the representation of the value one when it's negative looks like this. It is completely different and it is the opposite. Now I said, that we had two issues, right? Well, this does not solve the two issues. To solve the two issues, we have to go to two's complement. So here we have one's complement, and to go to from one's complement to two's complement is actually not very complicated. The only thing we do is we add the value one. So now negative one in two's complement would look like this. It would be eight ones. So by using two's complement, we're able to represent negative integers and be able to solve the two problems that we talked about in the beginning. Now, of course, this only applies to negative integers. Positive integers, you continue to represent them the same way that you've always had. And for negative integers, before we save them and we use arithmetic operations with them, they are first converted into their two's complement representation, which is not very complicated. You get its positive version, and then you flip all its bits, and then you add one to it as we showed here. Now let's take a look at how exactly does this fixes the two issues that we had in the beginning. So let's take a look at what is the highest number that we can represent with a chart? Well, that was the value 127. And 127 looked as follows. It looked like zero, one, 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 right? And if we were to make this into a negative using the previous method, not using two's complement, well, this, this would look something like negative 127. This would look something like eight ones, right? That was kind of how we said at the beginning that we just make that bit into a negative and we have a negative 127. Do you see a problem here, right? Now, what used to be negative 127, or how we used to think that negative 127 was being represented by just simply using the leftmost bit as the sign bit, that's actually now the value negative one. Now, when I show you the range of integers that char can represent, I said that the highest value that it can represent is negative 128. Now, negative 128, if we do its two's complement of it, What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be a negative, right? And then it's going to have a one and seven zeros, right? Now in here, we're assuming that the leftmost bit is not being used for the sign bit. And here we're just looking at it as, okay, the value 128 in binary is a one followed by seven zeros. And when we take the first complement of this, what do we get? 
we get to flip all the bits, right? So now we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then to turn it into two's complement, we add 1. And now when we do the math is, well, 1 plus 1 is going to be 0. And then we carry a 1. Then, it's, of course, it's going to be 0. We carry a 1. 0, we carry a 1. And we keep doing this all the way until we get 1 and 7 zeros. Does this look familiar? One seven zeros. Isn't that this fellow right here? So now, because we used to complement, we ha we solved the problem where we represented two times the value zero. Now, what used to be negative zero, now it's negative one hundred and twenty-eight, and this is the reason. Why, when we looked at the ranges up here on the left, where did I put this? Right here. This is the reason why the negative values that we have here, this is why they, this, oh, that's a weird arrow. This is why they can represent one value greater than its positive counterside. Okay, so we solved problem number one, and, fi and we also figured out the mystery of why the negative side of the range has a higher value than the positive side. What about doing the mathematics? Well, Let's do again this example, but this time we're going to do it with two's complement. So two will remain two, right? So two will still be zero, 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 zero. Uh, how many zeros do I have? Okay, one more and then zero. Now the value negative one, we already did it, right? So the value negative one in two's complement is just this, is eight ones. So I'm going to come here and write eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course, this is going to be an addition. And what do we get? Well, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, and we carry a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, and we carry a 1, and we continue to do this all the way until the end. Notice that we have a carry that is just kind of dangling around here. For now, when you have this carry, just ignore it. We're actually going to talk about this little floating carry that comes out from some of the operations on the next video. But for now, imagine that this carry is it's out of range, so we ignore it. So now when we look at this value right here, what is this? Well, we are in the ones side, and that's it. So this is actually the value 1. Well, last time I checked, 2 minus 1 or 2 plus negative 1 is indeed 1. So by using 2's complement, we get rid of the issue of representing 0 twice, and we also are able to do mathematics once again. Of course, we still have something weird to deal with, and that is this little carry one going on here. But again, we'll talk about it on the next video. You can probably realize that every time we have a problem, we find a solution, and that solution comes with a little, little error or something that we have to take into account. So we take that into account, and that might also bring another little thing that comes with it, and then we have to take that into account until we finally take into account everything. So the last bit that we have to still take into account is this little one that's floating. Do we just get rid of it? Well, the spoiler alert, sometimes you do, but sometimes it's meaningful. And we will talk about that on the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found this video useful and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the video series, check out the channel. If you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.